What's going on, everybody? It is Tuesday, April 17th, and we have a monstrous slate again today. I'm hoping that uh, we don't have holes in stadium roofs or anything like that today, and we can just get a bunch of these games in. Um, I am joined, as I usually am, by my co-host, Jake Hari. Jake, what's going on? Not much, Josh. Um, yeah, that was a weird thing yesterday with Toronto. Um, I would have liked to have them on the slate because I think I was leaning more towards a fade. But uh, So I think that would have taken some ownership off. I think they would have been mega, mega chalk. And, you know, it's always nice fading the chalk hitters. They only get four or five attempts at it, and you see them bust all the time. So I was, I was a little bit upset just because I wanted to fade that game. Uh, closer to lock, but hopefully we get a, a good day of weather. No no crazy stuff happening. Yeah. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe when that game said postponed, I was like, um, I don't think that's supposed to be the kind of game that's getting postponed. And then I saw that, you know, they were having some uh, roof issues. So, yeah. It made a little bit more sense. Weird stuff. Yeah. Um, you ready to dive into this? We got a ton to look at. Yeah, let's, let's do it. All righty. First game up. Pirates and Rockies. Uh, Pirates with a 4.4 run implied total. Rockies 3.8. It's a 56% chance to win for Pittsburgh. Uh, Trevor Williams on the hill for Pittsburgh. And Chad Bettis going for Colorado. Um, Bettis, not a guy that's uh, on my radar at all. Uh, You can talk me into a tiny amount of Trevor Williams on FanDuel just because of the odds of the game. But ultimately, I don't expect to have either of these guys. Uh, Williams doesn't miss enough bats for me, and Bettis just isn't very good. (laughs) Yeah, talk about two guys who just cannot miss any bats. You said it. Uh, Bettis has a 42.3% hard contact rate, but 44% ground balls against lefties. So I don't really want to target lefties i think his reverse splits are pretty true because he's got um some sort of change up or splitter i can't remember what pitch he throws it that makes him have legit reverse splits um the weather's good for pitching but i don't think you can really use either of these guys williams under seven percent swinging strike rate in his first three starts so like when i see that i'm just pretty much turned off for any pitcher for for dk at least um I don't know. Do you like bats here? Because, like I said, the weather isn't great, but there's a little bit of wind blowing out again to left. Um, you can probably talk me into a, a small pirate stack. Yeah. Um, Adam Frazier projected to lead off grades out really well for me on FanDuel, only 2,200. But to do that stack, I would be going... Pirates outfielder, Pirates outfielder, Pirates outfielder, and that's not really the way that I'm looking to start a, that stack off. Right. Uh, so I don't really love it. It's not the worst thing in the world. It might pop up for me, um, but I, like it's not. I don't really love Polanco's price, although he does. It's a really nice matchup for him. Um, I'll probably not have much of anything in this game uh, on either side. Yeah, me too. I think. Marte for 4,100 yeah. for Pittsburgh, I, I guess. And then on Colorado, if Ionetta is in the lineup, I would want to use him. But it doesn't look like he's in the projected lineup. So I'm going to assume that he's not supposed to be in. Yeah. And maybe Blackman in the three-hole, I think he'll just be low-owned. But, uh, yeah, with no Ionetta in the lineup batting in the top five, I'll probably not have much of this game, if any. So, yeah. It's just a, I don't know, it's sort of a blah game. The DK yep. stack of the Pirates looks a little bit better mm-hmm. from a price perspective than it does on FanDuel. Um, and getting Frazier's uh, dual eligibility is helpful, but there's better spots out there tonight. Um, no need to force it. I mean, granted, yeah. I would want to get backs against Chad Bettis, but it's not... I'm fine not having it. <laughs> right. It's just yeah, a, exactly. Un, a very uneventful game. Yep. Wish it were in Colorado. We might actually like it. Uh, next game, Mets and Nats. Uh, Mets with a 3.8 run implied total. Nats, 4.0. It's a 52% chance to win for the Nats. Uh, Zach Wheeler is going for New York. 
and Gio Gonzalez is on the hill for Washington. Um, I, in a way, I kind of like both guys. I think Wheeler's a, uh, a nice value on FanDuel in the middle of the pack salary-wise. Uh, they're actually significantly closer in salary, or like at least the perspective of it all, on DK. Um, I like D- I like Geo on DK. I like Geo on FanDuel. Uh, they're not my favorite. He's not my favorite guy on either slate, but I'd be fine with having a little bit of him. Um, it's nothing that I'm going crazy for. I think Wheeler would probably be like an interesting second pitcher. Yeah, Wheeler. So we talked about him maybe like having a new pitch, maybe making some adjustments. And yeah. you were on him last start. And I think he had like 25 DK points. So. That was a pretty ballsy play by you. So I just wanted to <laughs> remind the audience that <laughs> that's how we that. do it here I at Oscar.com. Guy coming off the DL, making his first start, and Josh was on it. So I was not. So kudos to you. Um, so that start didn't – I mean, that was definitely encouraging. 7,700 on DraftKings. But this Nats lineup is just one that I don't really want to mess with if I can avoid it. And – there is a pitcher that's really cheap that I like. So I don't think I'll end up on Wheeler, but it makes me not want to roll out a full Nats stack, that, that first start I'm talking about. Sure. So. Um, I loved him in that uh, in that game. Seven innings, seven Ks, one walk, only two hits. Um, the reason it looked so great was because it was against the Marlins. Uh, the Marlins have just a slightly different lineup construction than the Nats. <laughs> so yeah, but the the Marlins have knocked around like they knocked around Syndergaard and Degrom like they they've been pretty pesky. So it's not like they're just some rollover team where you go out there and you get eight Ks every time they go out. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they're bad. They are bad. But for DFS, they haven't they've been bad to target against so far outside of Wheeler and maybe a couple other guys. Either way, uh, I don't I don't want too much of Wheeler um, heading into the Nats here. If he had a slightly better chance to win, I'd be it'd be a little bit more appealing for me on FanDuel because he grades out decently because he's got good stuff. Um, but if I were looking at anything, I'd be looking uh, a little bit more at Geo. Um, is he in play for you on DK? Because he's relatively cheap. I think he's a little bit of a trap. Yeah, so he was like 11000 I think, the last start. So you're getting a, a $2,500 discount, but that was more of a slate thing, I yeah. think, because he was like one of the only guys you could really pay up for. Um, so 8500 is a better price. The run total is nice for the Mets if you're looking to target Geo, but I'm really not here. I think he's just sort of a an average to maybe slightly above average pitcher, not huge K stuff over the last couple of years. Um, and then I'm scared of some of these Mets bats. Like, I, I want to use Cespedes, Flores, Frazier, and Cabrera. Those are four guys that I like individually. I think it'll be a, a pretty low-owned stack, but there is weather here that we have to worry about for hitters. It's 45 degrees, wind blowing in. So maybe that'll keep me off the full Mets stack, but I do like those four guys individually. Hmm. Met stack, not something that crossed my mind. Um, yeah, I mean we are. They will be outside of Conforto. They will be running a lot of righty bats, mm-hmm. which is a good look. I just that that three point eight run implied total is is hard for me to get past. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I could see having a little bit of it. Uh, they're a little bit better of a value on on DK than they are on Fanduel. Um, Cespedes is, I don't really love Cespedes' price on FanDuel right now. So, what, what I get it. Handle? Uh, he's 3,700 on FanDuel. Uh, I would, based on his DK price, which looks a little better, I would expect him to be like in the 35, 34 range. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't, like, I don't hate it. I just, I don't see the crazy upside. What do we think about Geo's ownership today? I feel like he's going to be kind of popular. Um, because of that price discount? I think he'll be like, you know, with this this guy. So I'm, I'm referring to Cahill. Like, I think that he's going to be pretty popular at 5,100. And then I think Pavetta is going to get some ownership. And he's 8,400 on DraftKings, so right next to Geo. Yeah. 
Um, Kluber will get some ownership. Corbin will. So I don't think that Gio's ownership is going to be out of control. You got Atani, um, McCullers. So there are guys around him that I think, like I'll, I think he's going to be pretty low owned. Okay. I don't think I'm going to get there for the Mets bats. I don't think they'll end up showing up for me. I get it though. They're they're going to be able to run out that that big group of righties, and that's that's definitely appealing. I would prefer to see Cab- as Drupal Cabrera higher in the order. Yeah, he just rakes. He, he had just a good rakes night last against, night against both sides, and now people are starting to play him. But at the beginning of the year, he was getting like two and three percent ownership in these same type of spots. Yeah. So, I don't. I, I kind of like the top of the Nats order. Sure. I mean, play, clearly Bryce Harper. Yeah. yeah. He dumb you see last that night. Broken bat home run. Yeah. Like it, and it's not like it just cleared the fence barely. It was like 400 feet. It was such a violent feet. swing, too. <laughs> like, that guy is ridiculous. Yeah, it's just crazy. Absolutely. I can't wait to see what his contract ends up being. 500 million. Hopefully the Cubs get him. So, I'd say hopefully the Braves get him, but he's obviously not going to the Braves. <laughs> <laughs> Man. So, I can't really get too excited for that one. Yeah, I like, if it's Goodwin, Turner, Harper at the top, you know, I'm fine starting there. Um, the prices aren't the best for Turner, Harper, and Rendon. So, like, if I were going to do a Nat stack on FanDuel, I would need to do it with, you know, one of the pitchers down the line a bit further. And I'm not really sure who that would be. Maybe Junior Guerra, if I had to, if I needed to save money. Um, yeah, I don't, like... You know, Harper is a one-off bat on DK, I think looks okay. Um, the 5200 isn't as scary as it should be. I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't I don't really love this game either. This, these low totals are keeping keeping me muted on everything. Yeah, it's I mean, and it, the weather again is not not great. So, why why target this game when you can target a dome in Milwaukee or 70 degrees in Atlanta or, you know, like there's just it's hard for me to like get behind playing a ton of batters here outside of guys like Harper and then maybe some Mets one offs. Yeah, I mean Harper you can play whenever. If you need to if you have the money left and you have an open spot and it's an outfielder, just feel free to play Harper. Yeah. I mean it, he'll at least give you like three walks. He so should. there's that. Or a broken bat bomb homer. Mm-hmm. Nuts. All right, I think we can move on. Rays and Rangers. Uh, Rays, 4.2 run implied total. Rangers, 3.8. It's a 54% chance to win for the Rays. Um, I made up this line. It is not out yet, but let's just consider it correct for right now. Uh, Yanni Chirinos going for the Rays. Matt Moore going for the Rangers. Um, Is it Chirinos or Chirinos? I, don't know. Who cares? I, don't know. I thought I thought the guy from the Rangers. Well, it's Chirinos versus Chirinos or Chirinos versus Chirinos in this game. Oh yeah, Yanni versus Robinson. So I don't know. I thought it was Chirinos since it's Spanish. The I is pronounced like our E. Oh, that's a good point. What, what's really funny is that I, like I know that <laughs> I took <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> For some reason, I'm just not reading it correctly. <laughs> It's not like it's some one of those other weird like, like I didn't take German or French or any of that <laughs> stuff. Like I took Spanish. I I understand the logistics of that. I just don't apply it apparently when I speak. Um, well, I'm not, I'm not that far out of school, so maybe it's just fresh in my mind. Yeah, it's been a couple years for me, <laughs> and I wasn't exactly active in like the paying attention uh, <laughs> realm of schooling. Um, so I'll just go with Yanni. Uh, I could have a little bit of him on FanDuel if I needed to pay up for like really majorly big stacks. I'd probably feel the same way on DK where his price is basically zero. Uh, but pitching is not really my priority coming out of this game. Yeah. Um, it's certainly pitching, not Matt Moore. Yeah. Yanni, he's been, he's been kind of just okay. And that's more than I thought from him his first few starts. He's gone four or five and five and a third innings his first three starts. Um, but there's some 
big, big power in this Rangers lineup, specifically Gallo, Mazzara. Chu's got some power, Beltre. Like, these guys can all hit for power. So that's going to be enough to keep me off Yanni. But um, then you look at the other side, and it's Matt Moore. And so you, you want to stack up some righties. It's been a pretty profitable um, strategy so far. He's I think he's got like a 52% hard contact against righties. Um, oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm looking at Fulton Nevich against lefties. So, oh. but... So we'll get to that Close in enough. a second, but uh, <laughs> yeah, Moore gets crushed by righties, but there just aren't really enough Tampa righties that we like. Uh, yeah, Wilson Ramos. They don't really have enough righties that crush things. That's the problem. Right. They've got a ton of righties, got, which is great. They got righties that slap the ball um, right back at the pitcher, but that's that's about it. Yeah, uh, normally I'm I'm complaining even more about the Rays in each of these shows, but now it's only two guys with uh, sluggings over 400. So. Seven bats where uh, Tony Gwynn has had a higher batting average than their slugging. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> but that's Jeez. just comically horrible. Yeah. They're, but, I mean, they did put up, what did they put up, like eight runs yesterday? Like, they had a bunch of runs. I know that. Uh, yeah, they won eight to four yesterday. So maybe people will go back to them, and that's fine. Uh, but I think there are... I think I want to pay up for bats because I got this cheap pitcher that I really want to use, and you can get another stud in on DK, a stud pitcher, and then pay up for a bunch of bats. So I just don't think I'm going to be going in this price range on either side. Um, so I don't really love a ton of bats outside of maybe Gallo, who can get it out in literally any park. Yeah, I actually think I might end up on some Rays tonight, uh, which is hilarious after what I just said. It's possible that it doesn't matter. We'll see it when we do the crunch. Um, but they're they're grading out really well on FanDuel. Really, really low salaries. Like Hechevaria, minimum salary if he's hitting in the two-hole. To get all these righty guys together, I, like it's worth a peek for me if I need to save a little bit. Because I like Kluber a lot today. He's the most expensive pitcher on both sites. But 11-4 on FanDuel. So if I need to go to Kluber, um, I can get to a raise stack. And, and be fine with it. There'd be two guys, uh, minimum salary. I think that there's enough stacks out there today from what I've seen where I don't need to like scrape the bottom of the barrel. Uh, Price-wise, I can get to Kluber and guys that I think can actually hit the ball. So it probably won't matter. Um, but from a value perspective, the 4.2 run implied total is not the worst in the world. Uh, they're lined up great against more. More it's atrocious. So it's... I don't hate it. You know, it's dome weather, so it's not like we have to worry about anything weird there. Uh, it's just probably not the best spot. Yeah, I'm just, I don't know. I'll just fade the park. Um, I think Chirinos is okay, and I'm not crazy about the race bats in general. I think people will go back to them after they put up a bunch of runs last night. So I will be, I think, fading once again, even though they're super, super cheap. Any thoughts on the Rangers bats? I mean, like, Profar is grading out really well for me today. I think it would just be Gallo for me. I, I would just be home run hunting in yeah. this game with Gallo. Um, Mazzara is only 2,900 for some reason, and Beltre is 3,200. So I could get behind, like, a, a little mini stack. But I just want all these expensive bats, and I don't really want to use up outfield spots on guys that I don't really, really love today. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm with you. It's Their pricing is just really weird to me. But the implied total is pulling them down a little bit further than I would have ex expected. But yeah, yeah. Profar, 2,300. Mazzara, 2,300. Even Gallo's only 3,100 on FanDuel. Yeah, su super cheap, but... I, mean, I think I'm... he's... I want to say that he's been not good. But I haven't double-checked it. Um... Are you talking about Profar? Now Gallo. Oh. Uh, slugging 500 isn't doing anything else, but, a, you know, kind of Gallo's profile. So. Yeah, it's another game where I'm just kind of indifferent. Um, if you really need a raise stack to save some money, like if you want to go like Kluber or Otani and then the cheapest bats you can find, I guess that's probably like your only path on DK. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't mind it in that 
sense. Like if you want to go Kluber and yeah, Kluber Otani, Kluber Corbin, Kluber whoever, like Pavetta, yeah. then you're gonna need some of these cheap bats. So that that makes sense. Yeah, it's minimal own though. They're not gonna be a popular stack. Let's be clear here. Yeah. Twins and Indians. Uh, Twins three point two run implied total. Uh, Indians 4.3. It's a 64% chance to win for the Indians. Uh, Jake Odorizzi going for Minnesota, and the man we just talked about, Corey Kluber, going for Cleveland. Uh, I love Kluber today. I expect him to be my highest owned pitcher, um, or at least relatively close to it. Need a ton of him, in my opinion. Giant, giant chance for a victory, uh, which is monstrous on FanDuel. I like him a lot on DK, too. Uh, there's just a lot to like here. Um, only little nervous stuff I get is just because uh, Twins have some decent lefty bats, so there's a little bit more balance in the Twins lineup than I would love to see, but Kluber kind of transcends that stuff. One of the best pitchers in baseball. So I'm in for some Kluber tonight, and uh, Odorizzi is, is not in at all. <laughs> I'm in for some Kluber as well. Um, the Twins, I don't love targeting against them this early in the season or really just this season. I think they, they do have some good lefty bats, like you said. They are in the top half of the league, though, in swing strike rate and swing percentage. So I thought they were, like, one of the more disciplined teams when I checked a couple weeks ago, but it looks like they've uh, been a little bit swing happy the last couple weeks. And if you're not patient against Kluber, well, even if you are patient against Kluber, he's just going to be a guy that's going to throw strikes. And his stuff is just nasty. The whiffs are up where we want to see him the swinging strike rate looks good um everything really checks out for kluber in terms of him being healthy from what i've seen so as long as that's all a go with a guy that's a top three pitcher in the mlb i'm not super scared of this matchup like uh mal or uh so no you're not worried about him in this matchup no. the lefties are a little bit concerning just because there's a string of five in a row or four or five in a row but, and they've like, all plus. got like a little bit of pop too, so it's yeah. not they're not empty bats like the Rays lineup where you know Rosario yeah. projected 455, slugging Morrison 440, Kepler 455. You know Joe Maurer is one of the best like true hitters in the last however many years. Like the dudes, he's not out there like getting tricked all that often. <laughs> right, um, but I think Kluber pitches well here. Yeah, you know 12-1 on DraftKings, um, I'm certainly willing to pay that, especially with where I'm probably going to go with my, my second pitcher. So, yeah, nothing nothing bad to say about Kluber. It's a neutral matchup, I think. Um, really good pitching weather, 38 degrees here in Minneapolis. So uh, there's nothing bad to say about Kluber. I, I really like him tonight. Yeah, 3.2 run implied total is dead last for the slate as of right now. So, uh it's hard to not like Kluber. Um, I like the Indians' bats as well. Which ones do you like? Um, one, two, three, right out of the gate. Lindor, Kipnis, and Ramirez. Um, I, I'm in for that part of the stack. And then, uh, man, I love Michael Brantley in like other scenarios. I don't love the price here, but he's going to come along for the ride in an Indian stack uh, pretty easily for me. I think Brantley. Um, Brantley's the guy that's been crushing the ball. Who? Brantley. He's been uh, yeah. crushing the ball right now. Well, so. then uh, he should be fine here against Jake Odorizzi. <laughs> yeah, Odorizzi, um, we've seen these reverse splits with him over the last few years. He looks like he might have changed something a little bit this year. He's getting a lot of whiffs on his curve, and I was even considering using him uh, or like considering him as one of my few pitchers that I would – maybe having a lineup but against the indians i think that talk about a lot of tough bats in this lineup and if he pitches well here he's a guy that i'm going to keep my eye on for future starts especially if he's going to be really cheap but the whiffs on the curveball are encouraging for him but i just rarely play pitchers against the indians because there's just not a lot of strikeouts no not at all yeah i'm in for i'll, I'll have some lindor kipnis Ramirez, Brantley, uh, you know, I'm fine with some Yonder Alonso, like Edwin, Car Edwin Encarnacion can come along for the ride. Uh, I don't, I don't have much of a problem grabbing anybody here, really. 
That's fair. Yeah, I think I'm going to be off the Indian stack, but I do like Jose Ramirez and then uh, really three, four, five, I think. Ramirez, Brantley, and Encarnacion. Lindor is probably going to be one of my best plays of the, or one of my favorite plays of the day, oddly enough. Mm. I think he's going to grade out a lot at shortstop. That's interesting. All right. I could be wrong. Oh. That's my first guess when I uh, when we go and run some of these crunches. I think he's going to pop up a lot. Oh, I'm interested to see. I'll probably be wrong. <laughs> Do we got anything else here? No, I think that's it. Just just Kluber, and then I think I'm going to shy away from an Indian stack. Okay. I'm probably going to turn directly into an Indian stack. All right. Uh, Braves and Phillies. It went well yesterday. I hope it goes well again today. Uh, 4.1 run implied total for both teams. 50-50 split. Uh, we've got a coin flip game here. Fulty going for the Braves. Nick Pavetta going for the Phillies. Um, it's weird. Like I, I want to say that I want to run Fulty out there, but I don't really trust him. And the Phillies lineup scares me. At least the heart of their order scares me. Uh, for me, I don't really want any of the pitching here, especially on FanDuel, just because of the the status of the game. There's just a there's too many other guys that I think grade out better on FanDuel than they do um, than either of these guys on DK. Um, I think Pavetta is probably going to be kind of popular. His price is low enough that uh, you know there's some upside there, especially with his case. You know the Braves are not the scariest lineup in the world. Um, so I can see Pavetta having some popularity on DK. Have you looked at either of these guys? Well, I know you were at least looking at Fulty five minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. so I'll get to Fulty quick. Uh, I'm off him. 52% hard contact against lefties. Um, 22 or 21% uh, hard contact against righties. So, like, huge, huge splits for his um, hard hit, at least for the first few starts, which is pretty normal for him, actually. He usually gets crushed by lefties and is really good against righties. So the Phillies have a bunch of lefties uh, kind of sprinkled in their lineup. Herrera, Nick Williams is a guy I'm really interested in. Uh, Cesar Hernandez, Santana, and then you've got Reese Hoskins in there. So it, I do like all the lefties plus Reese Hoskins. And then Scott K uh, Kingery also is up to 4,300. I don't really want to use him in a righty-righty here. I'd rather just put in Hoskins if I was doing a full Philly stack. But really, two, three, four, five for me for the Phillies is something I like a lot. Yeah, um, I like Santana a ton here. He grades out really well. I, I would have no problem even running him out solo. Uh, that would be totally fine with me. But yeah, two, three, four would be probably my direction. I'd be more likely to go Hernandez over Nick Williams, I mm -hmm. think. Oh, but it'd be close. I just don't like Nick Williams' price. Well, no, that's not true. I just don't like Nick Williams. <laughs> I mean, he is a free swinger. Yes, he is. Every yes, he is. word. So That's like a home run lineup right there. Yeah. If you have Nick Williams in. He's like a Joey Gallo light. Type. Yeah, like he's, he's he's trying to get a home run every time, and he'll have games where he double dongs, and then he'll have weeks where he doesn't get a hit. And so, Carlos Santana is definitely the star play out of everything there. Yeah, he's my he's my favorite play in in this game. So, I agree there. And then Braves bats, um, I'm fine with Freeman, but otherwise, I don't really have much interest in a Braves stack. Yeah, so Pavetta has had two really nice starts in a row. He's done a really, really good job at limiting hard contact. And I'm sort of to the point where I don't want to go out of my way to target against him. I think you can play him for 8,400 here against the Braves. We've seen them really struggle against righties for some reason. Um, but those are more elite righties like Strasburg and, and Scherzer. So Pavet is not obviously to that point yet. But no. um, him being a favorite here against Atlanta, it's a good hitter's park. So I don't know what I want to do with Pavetta. I think he'll get talked up as the day goes on. Um, and, you know, there are some lefties here that you're scared of. Freeman, Albies, 
Marcakis, Preston Tucker, these guys can all hit pretty well. Um, not a lot of strikeouts here for Pavetta, at least if you go by these guys' averages against righties. Yeah, it's it's just an un, uninteresting game from a hitting perspective. The Braves just don't have enough like good bats where you really want to grab a bunch of them. And Pavetta's stuff is good enough that you really don't want to run ahead into that. So, um, yeah, like Santana is a guy that I'll have regardless of stack. Uh, but otherwise, like I don't, I I won't end up with any of the pitching and really any of the hitting here. Yeah. Um, so just Freeman, and then I actually, I'm higher on the Philly stack I think than you are. So Freeman and the the one through five or two through five Phillies. Yeah. Alrighty, Brewers and Reds. Now we're gonna have something to talk about. Brewers, four point nine run implied total. It is the highest of the slate as of right now. Reds, four point one. It's a fifty eight percent chance to win uh, for the Brewers. Junior Guerra going for Milwaukee. Sal Romano going for Cincinnati. Uh, I like Guerra here uh, a decent amount. I think that he's a nice. Uh, big time pay down option on FanDuel if you want to load up on crazy expensive bats just because of that 58% chance to win. Uh, 8.5 projected Ks per nine from Steamer is, uh, you know, enough to get me interested a little bit. And then I'd be more than okay with running out Guerra as a second starter on DK. Um, he wouldn't be my priority because of Cahill, but uh, I think that he would be a, a nice option there as well. Um, so I'll have a little bit of Guerra, um, nothing crazy, but I think that he's okay-ish. Um, any thoughts on these guys? Yeah, I'm, I'm not really on either of the pitchers here. Uh, Guerra had a decent first start, but I'm really not believing in it, looking at some of the, the advanced stuff. Not a good O-swing percentage. Not a good swinging strike percentage. Uh, it was at 5.8%. Obviously just one start, so, you know, a could be a number of factors in those numbers. Um, I'd like I'd like to target him with some Reds, but outside of Votto and maybe Scooter Jeanette, I don't think that there's really guys that you want to like stack. Um, Billy Hamilton at the top, you can steal on him a little bit, um, but I hate relying on on steals. So uh, it would really just be Votto and Jeanette here for me, and then. Like I get, I get the Garrett play, especially more on Fanduel. You have to pay a little bit more, but pretty good chance at a win here. So on DraftKings, I just like a guy that's that's lower priced that has, I think, way more upside. Agreed. So I'll be I'll be fading Garrett. Agreed. Um, yeah, I, I'm not wild. Like I don't need a ton of Guerra. Uh, what I do want a ton of is the Brewers bats. Um, a stack of the Brewers hitters is a no brainer for me particularly on FanDuel, where they're just priced in like a real preposterous way. If this lineup shakes out like it is, and there's some questions regarding it, you know, Braun's health is up in the air. Um, and Thames, too. Yeah. Uh, I'm cool with like one through six right now. You can even go one through seven, and I wouldn't be too bummed about it. But barely, like, there's just, they all look great. <laughs> I have no concerns going against Romano. So like, Thames and Shaw, I'm in. Braun, I'm in at 3,300. Lorenzo Kane leading off, only 3,000. I'm in. I, like, I just, I love the Brewers today. That 4.9 run implied total, number one, I want to have a lot of Milwaukee. I love the lefties specifically here for the Brewers. So if, if Thames is in, love him. If Shaw, well, Shaw is supposed to be in. He's 4,100 on DraftKings. That's probably a top three, uh, third base play for me tonight. Um, Romano had a 148 whip and 36% hard contact to lefties going back to the start of last season under 20% Ks, so below league average. Gives up a lot of pulled balls, so Shaw is a guy I really, really love. And Thames, um, assuming he's healthy and in the lineup. And then you can mix in some of those righties too, like Kane and, and Braun if he's in, and Domingo Santana. So, yeah, re really on board with the, the Brewer stack here, specifically the lefties. Yeah, I think Kane's going to be really popular for me at that price point, hitting leadoff. 
with that uh, implied total. It just those are all the things that I'm sort of looking for. If he hit lefty, oh my god, I can't even imagine <laughs> his yeah. projection would be above the spreadsheet. Yeah. Um, I ran out of red stack yesterday uh, in a chunk of my lineups, which worked out pretty nicely. Um, they scored 10 runs yesterday against Milwaukee. Uh, I'd be kind of okay with it here, too, in lineups where I didn't have Guerra. Um, they're just cheap. I like Billy Hamilton when he leads off just because like he's, if he gets on, he's almost guaranteed a stolen base. Like he... He's a guy where, like, I don't normally like chasing stolen bases either. Uh, he kind of transcends that. He's just that fast that, like, it's almost a given. So I, yeah. I like him when he's leading off, when he can get, um, like, some extra plate appearances and extra chances at that. Uh, but then, like, you know, I think Peraza is just a little bit too cheap. Uh, Joey Votto's price is only 3600 on on uh, FanDuel, so, like, I'm interested in him uh, at that price point. So, like, I can see a contrarian red stack here. Um, only a 4.1 run implied total, so I don't love it too much, but no one's going to be on a red stack. Yeah. <clears throat> is, is Hamilton being as aggressive, and I don't know if you know this, but is he being as aggressive this year as we've seen him in years past? He's got four stolen bases, which um, for a normal player is, um, I mean, that'd be pretty good, but... Uh, for him, it just seems like maybe he hasn't been as aggressive trying to steal every single time he gets on, or maybe he's just not getting on enough. Um, well, he's only had he's had sixty plate appearances, on base percentage of three seventeen. So that's what like yeah, okay, that makes sense. Sixteen times on base, no, twenty times on base. So like, you know, if any of those were doubles and triples or something, eight singles. A double. I think he a home walk. Actually, honestly, if he's got se- if he has, if he's been on first base seventeen times, I'm surprised he only has four steals. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe that's something that I'll look into after the show. Um, but I just I, I haven't heard the the talk about him. Like, oh, you, you, like a couple years ago, it was like, oh, you you have to play Billy Hamilton in the spot. He's leading off. This pitcher is not good. He's gonna he walks a ton of guys, and Hamilton would get on, steal second, steal third, and all of a sudden you've got. 14 DraftKings points uh, for a guy hitting a single. Yeah. So Steamer has him projected for 473 more plate appearances and 38 more steals. Zips has him in for 532 plate appearances and 53 steals. So Zips believes in the the wheels a little bit more. I mean, last four years, stolen bases. And this is a really weird stat. So we're going to start in 2014. 56, then 57, then 58, then 59. <laughs> All right, so he's got to get 60 this year. Yeah, not really on pace for that right now. No. He's on pace for like 40. So that's, yeah. a, that's a big time. I wonder if he's, something's wrong with him. Maybe. He could be nursing an injury. I don't know. It, this could all be noise, but I just... Haven't heard much talk about him, and I haven't looked into it myself. Yeah, like he could, they could, you know, they could have seen a, a steady diet of lefties or something that are more likely to hold him on, and that's why it's just been a little depressed. But could it's a be. good eye. It's not something that I had noticed. Interesting. Anyway, now that we're done uh, the Billy Hamilton section of, yeah. <laughs> of today's show, uh, do you have anything else you want to touch on in this game? No, I think that's about it. Yeah, go Brewers from a uh, stack perspective. That's basically the long and short of it all. We could have got there way quicker. (laughs) Cubs and Cardinals. Cubs with a 4.2 run implied total. Cardinals 3.8. It's a 55% chance to win for the Cubs. Uh, Tyler Chatwood going for Chicago. Adam Wainwright uh, going for St. Louis. Um, I don't know. I don't don't really have much interest in either of these guys. Definitely no go for me on, on Wainwright. Uh, at least on FanDuel, uh, but I don't imagine I'll have either of them. Yeah, this is the game. So this is the exact same game we talked about yesterday. Yeah. Uh, with both of these guys, the prices changed oddly enough. Um, but uh, this, good eye. Yeah. I wouldn't have. I would have never noticed yeah. that. <laughs> like Chatwood's down five hundred dollars from what he was going to be yesterday, and that's just a slate specific thing for yeah. DraftKings. Um, so we were both. We really liked the Cubs bats. Um, Rizzo. Hap, Contreras, Bryant, really those top five for the Cubs. 
I think we were both on pretty heavily. Yeah. And it's no different today. I mean, the weather's still about the same. You had a little bit of wind blowing across the field and then under 40 degrees. But like Rizzo, really, really like him for 4,400. Not crazy about Bryant for 5,100. He hasn't been hitting the ball that hard at all to start the season. Um, so Happ and Rizzo for me, maybe a, a Wilson Contreras. Um, it's it's tough for me to stack in this weather, but I really don't have much respect for Wainwright at all. Now I'm with you there. Uh, I don't love the Cubs bats, oddly enough, although I feel like I liked them yesterday. Um, Happ is the only guy that I like a lot, particularly on FanDuel. 3,500, just at the top of that order, is, is always fine by me. Um, but I don't really love the pricing. Uh, there's plenty of other options for stacks out there today. Cubs will probably be relatively popular just because of the Cubs, too. So there, there's a natural inclination for people to roster things they know. Uh, so I don't expect to be on much of anything from the Cubs. And uh, similarly, I don't expect to be on much of anything from the Cardinals. I would look at Fowler because I like guys at the top of the order. But um, other than the 3.8 run implied total, which isn't awesome, like I, I would look at Carpenter in a one-off scenario, I guess. Particularly on DK. $200 cheaper than he is on FanDuel. Dual eligibility. Uh, I think Carpenter can help make some lineups work. But this is a pretty uneventful game. Yeah, I'm I'm really not on the um, on the Cardinals hitters. I mean, I, I think I liked this spot a little bit more yesterday, um, for whatever reason, because there weren't really bats. Oh, there weren't really bats to pay up for yesterday. That's why. Yeah. So the Cubs were like the one spot where you could pay up for them, but now there are a lot of bats that I do like a fair amount. So a little bit lower on them today, but Rizzo and half really, and then I mean Chatwood's fine. He's too expensive, I think, for this matchup still. But um, I think he's decent enough where I don't really want to target the Cardinals in bad weather against him. Yeah, I'm with you. It's just, I want this game to be better. I like rostering the Cubs because I like the Cubs, like as yeah. you know, entertaining things to watch, but it's not the spot today. Yeah. I think this feels like the first time I've typed Diamondbacks into the top line here. Have they played at home yet? God. <laughs> Uh, Diamondbacks hosting the Giants. 4.3 run implied total for the D-backs. 3.7 for the Giants. Uh, Pat Corbin going for Arizona. 56% chance to win. And uh, Johnny Cueto going for the Giants. 44% chance. Um, I don't want any... I don't want Cueto at all in this. And uh, I don't really love Corbin on either site. But I think that you're going to tell me you do. I like I like Corbin a lot, um, okay. and yeah, it's it's a tough park, but and he he just dominated them for five innings, nine strikeouts, and then he got a little wild in the sixth inning and didn't even record an out, loaded the bases I think, but um, I'm willing to say that I'm giving him a pass on that sixth inning, so I really like Corbin here. Um, he's one of the best pitchers in the MLB really right now. Second and whiff per swing. Uh, game log looks great. The swinging strike rate looks awesome. Everything looks like a go here for Corbin, just for him being a, a really good pitcher. Um, the Giants are top 10 in swinging percentage, uh, uh, swinging strike rate, and O swing percentage as well. So, I mean, you look at the individual matchups, yeah, you're, he's probably not going to strike out Longoria and Posey and McCutcheon a bunch of times, but. For 9,800, I think that he's like I'm someone that I'm really, really looking at tonight for my top starting pitcher. If I can't get up to Kluber at at 12-1 or Otani for $1,100 more, I'm honestly shocked at how much like my model hates him. He, and that might be a thing where I don't know what kind of sample size you're using, but like he was really bad at the start of last season, and he wasn't like a great pitcher before, so maybe if you're using a huge sample and it's it can't catch up to he, he's a different pitcher right now. Like he figured something out, and he's getting all these whiffs. Like he's only behind Otani in whiffs per swing. So yeah, like three had, three games so far: eight Ks, one walk; twelve Ks, one walk; 
nine Ks, two walks. He's 29 Ks, four walks in 18 innings. That's, whew. Yeah, and I've watched a couple, like two out of the three of these starts, and he, like, you're not supposed to go by your eyes in baseball. Well, you're not supposed to rely on them, but um, he looks awesome. Like, there's so much movement on his pitches, and he just looks like a stud pitcher now, which is weird to say about Patrick Corbin, but he's legitimately been one of the best pitchers in the MLB this season. Man, it's so cool. Like, again, just three starts, but ground ball rate, 62%. He was like 50% for his career. Uh, fastball velocity is there, so, like, nothing weird there. Um yeah, he might, he might be someone that I need to just manually boost a little bit. But I still don't think that I'm going to end up getting to him because he's just like, he's that far behind that I feel, this is one of those scenarios, I run into it a lot in the NBA. Uh, there'll be, you know, one guy, maybe two guys in a given slate where I'm just dramatically off from everything that I see in the public and the way that things are going. And I, I try to use those scenarios as, like, my guideposts. So whenever we post our rankings and stuff today, I'll be anxious to see uh, where Osimo has Corbin ranked yeah. on FanDuel. And yeah. Because we, for the most part, we line up pretty nicely. So if I see him, like, slightly muted on it, I'll feel good. If I don't, it'll be something where I'll come back and dig in and take a deeper look at it to see if I need to boost him up a little bit. Yeah, because like he's not going to show up at all for me. I yeah. guaranteed zero lineups out of a hundred on both sides, and that's, that's aggressive. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely be getting. I don't think he's going to be super high owned either. Here, I think people talk themselves. People will talk themselves out of him. Um, okay, righty heavy lineup for San Francisco, bad park. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, but like this guy has been that good where. He's not matchup proof, but this is a matchup that I'm not really scared of. Yeah, like if I if I looked at everything except for my projected points, if I looked at looked through the matchup, looked at the projected totals, looked at his, what he's done so far this year, I'd be like, oh shit, he's got to be one of the better pitchers of the day. And it's like if I uncover those columns, that's I'm waving my hand across the screen. That's me uncovering the columns that are in front of my face. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd be shocked to see like just how not even remotely close he's going to be to being in a lineup. So I'm just now I'm just anxious to like watch the D-backs game tonight. I won't see a single second of it until tomorrow morning. But <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be, I'll be watching regardless. Um, I just like watching him pitch right now. Like he's just been dominant. Yeah, tw uh, what did I say it was? Twenty, however many strikeouts. Twenty-eight to four. Yeah, was that what right. it was? Yeah, twenty-nine yeah. to four. So, like, I'd like to watch that, too. <laughs> Sounds awesome. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, we are probably on different sides of the coin for Corbin tonight. What are you thinking about the Diamondbacks' bats? Yeah, I really, really like them, too. Um, so that's a little bit of a bump for me for Corbin. I think the Diamondbacks will get to Cueto here. Cueto is um, – 129th out of 140 pitchers qualified for wisp per swing on the season. And that's for Boy. starters that have thrown 100 pitches. Um, lots of hard contact to lefties over the last year and change. So I'm liking uh, Peralta, Kettle Marte, and then Alex Avila for 2,900. Give me some of that in the sixth spot. This is a guy who just smacks left or smacks righty pitching, like over 50% hard contact over the last year. Um, you can, of course, throw in Goldschmidt, um, Pollock, and then Descalso for 2,500. He looks like a different hitter um, toward the end of last year, um, hitting righties pretty hard. So I like all those guys, really the top six for Arizona. Um, and I didn't think I would until I saw how few bats Cueto's been missing. Yeah, that's, that's brutal for Cueto. For a guy that, like, had real stuff in the yeah. past – um, yeah, I like the Diamondbacks bats a lot. Uh, Kettle Marte is a guy that pops up for me all the time. Um, he's just got a kind of got that like naturally solid uh, slash line and a, just like a muted price always. So he's a guy that comes out on like a dollar for dollar basis to be a really nice value 
he's not the sort of like high end upside guy. So I'm always okay to have him as part of a stack because uh, I think he's likely to get like <clears throat> a functional amount of points. Never a guy that's going to really kill me. Uh, I'm in for some Goldschmidt, some Pollock. You mentioned uh, Descalso. Uh, I think that he looks really nice for a minimum salary on FanDuel. So part of a stack oh, yeah. against Cueto is, is perfectly fine by me. This okay. is really rare, um, especially the way this matchup shakes out. So, like, the Diamondbacks are just creating really weird stuff for me today. Peralta projected to lead off, gets the lefty-righty matchup. I don't like, like, he doesn't grade out well for me at all. And I, it's so rare that guys hitting leadoff don't have good uh, rankings for me in situations where they have, like, a decent implied total. It's just usually a natural spot, but... I don't know if it's a combination of how much my my stuff hates him or price or what, but he's just like one of these rare leadoff hitters that doesn't have a nice ranking for me, which is crazy. So I'd be more likely to go like two, three, four, five, or you know two, three, four, five, six if I were on DK and uh, if I would need to get to Avila and needed a catcher. Yeah, um, I, I just I like Avila anytime he's going to be against a righty yeah. and in the top five or six in the lineup. Um, so one few more things on Descalso. He, over the last year, he's got over a 40% hard contact against righties. Um, 332 Woba, and I haven't updated this in a couple of days, so there's a few games left out, but you get the idea. 45% fly ball rate, um, striking out about league average. And he's 2,500, and he's hitting the ball really hard this year. So like he's in the top 25 in April. Or I'm sorry, he's in the top 65 in April. Um, I think I was looking at the righty. Anyways, he's 60th in April, uh, 92.6 miles per hour average exit velocity. Um, yeah, I just like him a lot for that price. So that's a guy that I just wanted to touch on again. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, uh, so I'll like uh, I'll like to have a little bit of a Diamondback stack. Um, you can really go in any real direction. Um, <laughs> What's really crazy, I'd be okay with a Giants contrarian stack against Corbin on DK. I like the pricing there. Um, 2800 for Austin Jackson, uh, 3400 for Posey, or 3400 for McCutcheon, rather, 2900 for Longoria. I think you can sneak into that if you wanted to fade Corbin on DK. I don't love the pricing as much on FanDuel, but it would be a very contrarian stack, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, the pricing's fine. I just. If you're, if you're rolling out 150 lineups, I think it makes sense to have a couple just yeah. be, because of the pricing and because there's good hitters in the Giants lineup. Yeah, they wouldn't be my a, single entry. Let's, yeah. Let me, let me so get that out. For, for me, like I, I, they're not going to sniff my lineup. No, not at all. Uh, I just have that much respect for Corbin right now. I wish that game would start at 7 o'clock so I could watch some of it. Yeah, it'll, it'll be good. Corbin, Corbin uh, complete game shutout is going to be fun. There you go. A's and White Sox, uh, 4.8 run implied total for the A's, 3.7 for the White Sox, 61% chance to win for the A's. Uh, Trevor Cahill going for Oakland, and Miguel Gonzalez going for Chicago. Cahill not in the player pool for FanDuel, which is kind of a bummer because he would have looked great. And Trevor Cahill looks like one of the better plays you could have on DK if you're looking to save some salary. Um I like Cahill a lot here. I know you're going to tell me you like Cahill a lot here, but since it's DK and I can't touch him, the floor is yours. Yeah, Cahill, um, he's a guy that I loved during the start and the middle of last season. Uh, he's coming off a five and two-thirds, seven strikeouts, gave up three, uh, three runs. He's a guy that's going to struggle with walks. He can be very volatile at times. But this is like the perfect matchup for a righty that's got strikeout stuff. Against the White Sox, you've got Abisel Garcia, Jose Abreu, Wellington Castillo, Matt Davidson, um, Tim Anderson, Adam Engel. Like all these guys strike out, uh, maybe not Abreu, but um, above the league average against righties. Cahill's got really good stuff. Uh, and when he's on, he's got like 10K upside. Um, maybe not in this start because it'll probably be eased back into it but as long as i don't see anything about a pitch count i haven't seen like if he's got a 70 pitch count okay maybe i'll be 
off of him a little bit. Yeah. But he just threw five and two thirds, and I'm trying to see how many pitches he threw. Um, but as long as he doesn't have like some limited pitch count, I just don't see how I don't play Cahill here. Yeah, he, he. I mean, he looks great. Fifty one hundred is a is a crazy low price. It allows you to grab Kluber or if you wanted Otani or probably, like whatever big pitcher you want to be on on DK. Uh, you can grab them both and still do whatever you really want uh, with your bats. Fifty one hundred is just a preposterous price. Yeah, and the White Sox um, just against both hands, they are top three in O swing percentage, swing percentage, and swing strike percentage. So they swing the bat and they're going to miss a lot of times. And Cahill's a guy that can make you miss and he's 5,100 and a huge favorite. So that's, that's my case for Trevor Cahill. Um, if he bombs, I will, I'll live with it, <laughs> but I just like, this is chalk that I, I want to play. Cause I think he's like, if he was, 7k if he was 7500 i would still be considering him here it's not just a price thing i think he's a i think he's a good pitcher yeah i think he looks really nice um for tonight i wish that he were available on FanDuel because of the 61 percent chance to pick up the win but unfortunately no go there um i don't have a ton of interest in any white Sox bats uh the pricing's not horrible but there's not a lot of like advantageous uh, matchups going. Um, A's bats, on the other hand, it's definitely a direction you're going to want to go. Second highest implied total on the day. Uh, I, you know, we've been talking about him for a couple of days now, but if Matt Joyce is leading off, lefty against the righty, I, I couldn't get enough of him. He'll be one of the more popular guys in all of my stacks today. Um, you know, Matt Olson can obviously make a ball go pretty far uh 3300 on FanDuel 4000 on DK uh so Joyce and Olsen would be the start of anything that I wanted to do and then I'm, I'm more than happy grabbing Semyon or Lowry Chris Davis that all works for me down the rest of it um A's will be a relatively popular stack for me love the A's as well um Miguel Gonzalez really really struggles with lefty power um, 575 XFIP against lefties, under 15% strikeout rate going back to the start of last season. So you've got Joyce, Lowry, and Olsen, who are all under 4,000. Joyce is only 3,100. Um, so on DraftKings, it's going to be a, a chalky play, but I love those three guys. Um, Chris Davis is 4,900, jammed in between all them. But, like, give me, give me some Chris Davis, and then... Semyon, I'm not in love with for 3,500, but he's just in the middle of the stack. And then Chapman in the six hole for 4,300 is a guy I don't think a lot of people will play, but that's a guy that I'm okay playing at 4,300, even in righty righty. So A is one of my top three stacks of the night for sure. Couldn't agree more. Um, I know you mentioned something about Miguel Gonzalez's ex fit. I have it Five. here. Uh, in the past calendar year, Everybody that's thrown at least 100 innings as a starter, he has the second highest XFIP of everyone, only behind Mike, Mike Pelfrey. Yeah, he's he's not a good pitcher. Um, no. And he does give up a lot of pulled balls too. So for guys like Matt Olson, for Jed Lowry especially, guy that doesn't have huge power but some power, he pulls a lot of his home runs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like the A's. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how you really get a. I mean, it's baseball. Like Miguel Gonzalez could throw a, a shutout here, but uh, I think he gets rocked here. So love me some A's. Agreed. Angels and Red Sox. A uh, 4.2 run implied total for the Angels. This can't be. Is that right? Is this really right? 3.3 run implied total for the Red Sox. Yes, that's that's right. Yep. Okay. All Vegas is um, they're buying in Doatani, so yeah. Um, three point three run implied total for the Red Sox, second lowest on the day. Wow, fifty nine percent chance to win for the Angels. Uh, Otani is throwing for the Angels. David Price going for the Red Sox. Um, I like Otani a lot here. Uh, I don't have any interest in David Price, which is. Just a really weird thing to say, but I mean, the Angels' projected lineup right now is only righties, which is hilarious. 
Um, yeah, I don't... I don't want any bats in this game. Um, but I certainly don't want any price. Uh, I, I actually like the Angels. but uh, So Otani, first of all, number one in Whisper Swing on the year. And so he already looks like an elite pitcher. I think we talked about him last start or two starts ago where we were on him. Um, but he wasn't super owned. I, don't, I think I think people weren't really buying in. But he like he's legit. And he's legit as a hitter too. So one of the most exciting players in baseball, if not already the most exciting player in baseball. Um, I think the secret's starting to come out on him. Vegas really respects him. So um, for 10-9, like, he's obviously not Corey Kluber, but that is a pretty sizable discount for a guy that's already seems like one of the best pitchers in the MLB. Yeah. And the Red Sox, I mean, not a great matchup for really anyone, but um, yeah. I'm definitely considering Otani as my starting – like, if I want to pay up for a bat that's $1,200 more and I have Kluber in my lineup, I'm pretty comfortable getting down to Otani. So – if I can afford Kluber, I'd like to get him in there. But if I can't, I'll take the savings with a guy that's just a notch below. Who do they have? Who will DH for them? For the Angels? Game? Yeah. Um, well, Pujols will DH. Okay. So Jeffrey Marte will be playing first, I believe. Okay. And then... Um, I'm surprised Otani doesn't bat. They, they won't bat him on... Um, so I think it's... Either the day before or the day after his starts. Right. And then they're not batting him during the start either. That makes no sense to me. Because if they DH him and he comes out of the game, I don't know how that would work, actually. Um, maybe it's just something the Angels are doing. They don't want to overwork him. Uh, but I don't know. That is, that is a good question. I can't. It's been so long since I've had to think about that rule. Is it that if he hits for himself, the pitcher will need to continue to hit maybe for the that's rest it. of the game? Maybe that's it. Um, that makes sense to me. I feel yeah. like that's the case, but you know, it's not something that obviously comes up all that often. Or I just think they're trying not to. Yeah, they're just trying not to overwork him too with the not batting or not hitting before or after. Maybe both. Yeah. So, so that part I get, but like to act like fifteen other teams don't have their hitter or their pitchers bat every day is kind of preposterous. But if it, if that's the sub rule, then yeah, you'd want to take advantage of just having a a hitter for the rest of the game. So that mm -hmm. makes sense to me. I don't want any hitters in this game, either side of the coin. I like uh, the Angels one, two, three. Okay. So I like Kinsler Trout, of course, against the lefty. I mean, I don't care if it's David Price. I think. Price is better than what he was last year, but we saw him get smacked around against the Yankees. Yeah. And Trout's got huge power. So does Upton. So Kinsler at the top. It's really one, two, three for me. And then I'm really not going to mess around with Pujols or, or Cozart or Simmons. But yeah, I'd be fine Trout. with Trout, particularly on DK. I, yeah. Whenever I say, like, I don't, I don't want anybody, if there's a guy like Trout or Bryce Harper yeah. or something on the team, they don't count. Right. <laughs> That's yeah. not the same sort of. They they, they transcend uh, my my broad brush. Uh, but I, like I really don't like Trout is a one off. Sure, I don't I don't have any interest in any single hitter in this game. That's crazy. That's really crazy. I, I like Trout and Upton are two of my. They're definitely in the top ten or twelve outfielders for me tonight. So those are two guys I I really really like. <sighs> okay. Look, I get where you're coming from. Um, you know, righty-lefty matchup. 4.2 run implied total is not so shabby. I just feel like there's better stuff out there. I mean, I'm interested to see this game now. I'm just, I might have to watch a ton of baseball tonight. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe get a nap in and then uh, get up. And this is pretty late for you, so... 10 Eastern start. The wife's got some work stuff going on tonight. Uh, dinner somewhere else without me. So it might be a, might be a guy's night where I grab the dogs and make them watch baseball with me. <laughs> and by make them watch baseball, I mean watch them sleep on the couch. There you go. Anything else in that game? Uh, nope. Mariners and Astros. 
3.5 run implied total for the Mariners, 4.5 for the Astros. It's a 62% chance to win for Houston. Uh, Ariel Miranda going for Seattle. Lance McCullers going for Houston. I like McCullers a lot here, uh, either site. Uh, no interest in Miranda, but McCullers is going to be a guy that I have a lot of. He's probably uh, like my 2A to my 2B of Alex Wood, who we'll get to next. But I like McCullers here big time. Um, yeah, I mean, I like. I think I like him a decent amount here. I think I just prefer Corbin over McCullers. Um, you know, I'll give McCullers a pass for his last start. He just lost command. And I'm not really worried about that in the long run. 9-6 on the road here. Um, this Mariners lineup doesn't have a lot of strikeouts in it, but McCullers does have elite strikeout stuff. Yeah. So I think it's just a slate thing for me. If if Corbin and Atani weren't on the slate, then McCullers would be a really nice mid-range option that I would look at. But um, I do prefer Corbin over McCullers. Okay. And, you know, for me, with the 62% chance to win, like, that's that's a much bigger driving force on FanDuel. Yeah. Um, I love his, like, he, he's obviously got <clears throat> elite, elite stuff. Yeah. Um, so as long as nothing goes super haywire like it did in the last start, uh, he should rack up a, de- like a decent enough amount of Ks and have a situation where he's very likely to pick up a win. The most important part of it all to me is, how many righty bats they're running out against Ariel Miranda, who oh, yeah. is going to struggle mightily to get through Springer, Bregman, Altuve, Correa, Gurriel, Gaddis, everyone, just everyone. <laughs> uh, so I like the Astros a lot as like my pay up stack. Um, and I like McCullers a lot as one of my three favorite pitchers of the night. Yeah. So I, I don't want to target any Seattle bats against McCullers nope. and, um, Miranda is a guy that I liked quite a bit for a few weeks last season. Uh, I thought he had really figured something out. His whiffs were way up. His swinging strike rate was really um, was up for like four or five starts in a row. So you could probably go and look at the game logs and see when I was on him. And then when I went on him, I was like, okay, this guy had figured something out. And he gave up like five earned in, in two and a third. And so he, he's just a guy that's going to have a home run problem. And he gave up almost two home runs per nine against righties last year. Um, and that is about the worst combination you can have going up against the Astros who are super righty heavy. Those top six, again, I feel like we talked about it yesterday as well. You can stack them up here. Yeah. Um, one through six. Who, who are your favorite Houston bats? Mine are um, Bregman and probably Correa. I would say Springer and Bregman for okay. me. Um, so we both love Bregman. Yes, absolutely. 4100 on DraftKings is too cheap. He's always like seven to $800 cheaper than um, Correa, Altuve, and Springer for some reason. Yeah, it, Springer, Springer and Bregman would be my one, two. But honestly, like those first four – are a package deal. Like I don't, I'm just in for those four guys more than anything else. Oh and, yeah. Which is funny because like I didn't even get to Guriel, who, you know, obviously mashes as well. Guriel, yeah, Guriel is not far behind those guys. So, no, like, I mean, like any sort of combination of those first six guys, um, I'm completely in. Gaddis smashes lefties. Yeah. Um, Springer does. Like these guys all strike out around like 15 percent. Mm-hmm. against lefties and their hard hit rates are super high up their wobas are high their isos are high they're just like this is a left-handed pitcher's nightmare so a full houston stack even on a slate this big for one lineup is not out of the question for me yep i'm gonna have a bunch of them i hope any uh, do we have anything else i don't think so uh no pews and bats, and then you like McCullers. I'm, I'm off of him, but not for reasons that have anything to do with McCullers. <laughs> okay. I, I don't think I don't know if we touched on this or not, but there are no weather concerns for tonight as of right now. Um, I'm seeing nothing but, like, relatively good stuff across the entire board. Yeah, here's cross. Um, nothing looks like it's going to get postponed right now. Right. 
So I just want to make sure I got that out there from like a, a rain perspective. Final game, Padres and Dodgers. Uh, Padres 3.3 run implied total, uh, tied for the second worst on the day. Dodgers 4.5. It's a 64% chance to win uh, for Los Angeles. Brian Mitchell uh, going for the Padres. Alex Wood going for the Dodgers. Uh, basically everything that I just said about McCullers is sort of the same feeling I have for Wood. They are $200 separated on um, on FanDuel, both with gigantic chances to pick up a win. Uh, both should you know pick up a decent amount of strikeouts. Uh, I'm not very worried about a Padres offense at all. Uh, like I want to have a lot of. Ex- I want to have a lot of exposure to Wood and McCullers. It's possible that all of my pitching is just Kluber, McCullers, and Wood tonight. Yeah, I'm not as high on Wood, I don't think. Um, I think I'm just building lineups a little bit differently for having a pitcher in this price range. So, I mean, I get I get the Wood play for sure. The low implied total for the Padres – there are a couple lefties that I'm worried about, or a couple righties that I'm worried about for the Padres, Perella and Renfro. Specifically, Wood was shaky against Oakland and the D-backs. Um, this is obviously a, a better matchup. Um, I don't know. I think I'm just – I don't really have a, a strong reason why I want to fade Wood outside of I would rather pay up a little bit for Corbin and Atani, or I'd rather pay way down for Cahill. I hear you. Um yeah, just being able to get like <clears throat> wood stuff in San Diego, sixty four percent chance to win. Like as long as all of that holds up for me, uh, that's like my perfect recipe for um, for a starter on Fanduel. Uh, I don't have any interest in any Padres bats. Do you? Um, I mean, I Arella. can maybe Renfro for three thousand against the lefty. Like okay. wood, wood is a good lefty, but. If you're home run hunting and you've got three thousand dollars left, and you can't get up to like a, a Nick Williams for the extra two hundred, I think Brent froze okay. I'm with you there. I, I like a Dodger stack here tonight. Um, yeah, anywhere in the top six is fine with me. I'm not a big Cody Bellinger guy in general, but uh, I'm in for him today. It's not the best price, but that's fine. I, I mean, the rest of the lineup is cheap. Corey Seager at 3,600 uh, is going to be showing up a lot for me. Great matchup. Uh, Grandal looks really nice, uh, particularly on DK where you need to play a catcher. Um, I like the Dodger stack. It's going to be really scary for me uh, to have a bundle of McCullers, Wood, Astro stacks, and Dodger stacks. I'm going to be sitting at the ass end of every tournament for <laughs> three hours before they even start. Oh, yeah. Your, your winnings are going to say zero, and then you're going to go to sleep, and hopefully they wake up and you got a comma or two in there. Dude, that's the worst feeling in the world. It, no, the worst feeling in the world is when you go to sleep because you had early dudes and your winnings are like 4000 or something yeah. on 60 bucks because you have everybody playing, and it's like, what is happening? And then you wake up and you're down 30 bucks. <laughs> yeah, I, I like late hitters. Um, I think the late games just go generally unowned. So it seems like we're talking about, like, we love the A's, we love the Astros. Um, I like the Angels a little bit. And the Dodgers are, are right up there with one of my top stacks at night, Seager and Bellinger, two of my favorites on the slate, Grandal. I guess um, if he's going to be in the lineup, I think he – did he play last night? I know he had a home run. Let me check. Or did he did he start, I should say. Because I, I thought he wasn't supposed to be in the lineup, and then he ended up – he usually doesn't play against lefties. Uh, no, he played. He had he had four at bats. Yeah, and I think he, I don't know if he homered off a lefty or whatever, but I love him against righties. Two for so. four, home run, run scored, five RBI, and a walk. Yeah, huge, huge game. Um, Seager, Bellinger, uh, Grandall, three of my favorite bats of the night. Grandall is one of my favorite catchers of the night for sure. Up there with Gaddis, and there's another guy I mentioned that I, that I can't remember. Um, but catcher's not super deep tonight. Uh, Mitchell. No, I don't know who you mentioned. Uh, Gaddis. Contreras? Contreras I liked. Um, is there one more? Avila. Avila, that's it. Um, so all all the late bats, really, for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all the fun looks like it's starting at 10 o'clock uh, Eastern time. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping the, the first 
eight to ten games stay pretty quiet and then just the late night hammer just see the winnings go up and up and up and up and up that's that's the dream and it seems like that's how i've been doing it every single night for mlb at least maybe i'll uh maybe i'll put a pot of coffee on at like 8 eight thirty, dual monitors up with nba playoffs and uh late slate mlb or get the get the four games going in the cube on the on the screen yes just... All of a sudden, it's one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh, glory. You're gonna need a third monitor for the, the NHL games, though. Yeah, yes, I will, <laughs> because we have exceptional hockey content that I should follow. <laughs> do the yeah, Rangers, okay. I'll... Do the Rangers play today? The, no, no the, the Rangers do not. They Rangers are done. They they, were done. they fired uh, their manager, right? Av, yeah, they fired him. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, they are my. Um, team that i claim that i follow yeah they're it's good that you didn't follow them this year they were kind of a train wreck i basically haven't followed them since like i don't know <laughs> messier retired <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. big big messier fan big brian leach fan big mike richter fan uh, <laughs> other than that I, I couldn't i couldn't name anything else it's really weird that i even landed on them it's just purely based on video games i, I rarely uh i rarely take on any new york um, teams as things I like, but that was always the direction I went. So, yeah, it, I'm in for Dodgers bats if we want to bring this uh, full circle. Oh yeah, Dodgers bats all the way down uh, to Puig, and I'm in. Oh yeah, Puig, Puig probably won't get too much ownership batting sixth against the righty too, but he can hit righties really, really hard. And Mitchell can't strike out anybody. And like you know, I'm fine with Utley if he's hitting seventh. If you need a second baseman in your stack, like it's not my. I don't like going all the way down that far into the order. But if you're grabbing a guy like Utley at a posi- like at a non-premium position, it's it's fine with me. It's not like second base is this place where it's loaded with uh, like mashing talent. So, well, besides uh, Daniel Descalso, sure. <laughs> so I plugged my FanDuel numbers in. And ran a hundred lines before we started, so that's okay. what's in here now. Um, I was just really interested. I woke up. I didn't have like a food hangover or a booze hangover like I've had for the past couple days, so I felt really good and really energetic. <laughs> uh, as you guys can see, first five guys that are on here in a hundred lineups, all from the Brewers. So. If those guys are in the lineup tonight, uh, the Brewers Ooh. are far and away the, the the best stack coming out of um, my FanDuel data, which is really exciting yeah. for me to see. Lots of Kluber, mm-hmm. lots of McCullers, lots of Wood, Otani, uh, sprinkling of some other guys. I'll probably tighten that up a little bit. Uh, I would like to see a little bit more Wood, <laughs> a little less McCullers. Um Reds bats popping up again for me, which is interesting. Uh, Billy Hamilton and Votto. Uh, I think that my... I think I probably need to mute Hamilton a little bit if he's not going to be swiping bags at the same rate. It was interesting that we looked at that because this is built on him, you know, being the guy that tries to grab basically a steal a game. Yeah. Um, The Mm. rest of the stacks, like, it's very spread out, which really surprised me. Um, it's just, it's such a primarily large brewer stack. Yeah. So we were looking at what Dodgers and Astros, like where's the first, so, so there's Seager. So those are some, um, you know, little bits of Dodger stacks. Seager, Puig, Camp Grandal, like I like that sort of stuff. Um, I'm not seeing any ink, like normally Trout transcends when I run this. Yeah. And, like it's just not coming up. Um, I think he's nowhere to be found. Is he on yeah, here at all? Get... <clears throat> I don't see him on there. He's not on there at all. That never happens. Yeah, you might want to get some Michael Trout. Or maybe I don't. Maybe I don't want to get any Michael Trout. Maybe not. He can't do it every night. But he's gonna go three for five with three dongs or something while I have zero percent of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's going to be like 10% owned too, which yeah. is eh, maybe not against the lefty. But Let's check out DK sleep. now. I finally set up my macro, so it copies everything automatically. Slowly but surely, I'm getting back into the swing of things. DK is going to be interesting here. 
pricing was a little weirder. I just always like running the DraftKings stuff because it's always so different because of lineup construction. Oh yeah, completely. It's a completely different game. Yeah. So that's why I like to stick to just DraftKings. I think it's a lot easier with the usual tighter pricing for for one lineup. I'm just trying to take the very best stacks, very best hitters. So, but it is interesting to see where ownership goes or might go based on what we're seeing here in your crunch. It's always like I don't know how people play on both sites with volume. It, I mean, it, yeah, especially early in the season when pricing is so, so different. To me, the only way you can do that is if you don't actually pay attention to the sport. Like if you're treating this like it's, you know, day trading stocks or something like that. You just, you have to rely on the data. You can't be like, oh, well, I like, I think he's this on this site. And because, like, you, you can't get into that. Right. Otherwise, you'll just, I mean, like, this is my life now, and I don't feel like I would have the time to be able to like play both sites and think that I had the knowledge of both of them. You just have to like set it and forget. You got to be that confident in your model, in my yeah. opinion. That's why. <clears throat> that's why guys like Osimo are so good at what they do. It's, exactly. Like it's not like they're just like. That's you know, the separation. Like, yeah, like they his model is very very good and precise for both sites yeah like, he's not it's not just because he has 150 lineups that he's no he's on a different crushing. level yeah and people don't really like people think it's like yo he can max enter it so he's fine that's not no that's not it that's not <laughs> if it's it. that easy Do everybody it. would be just cleaning up in the quarter right yeah try it in the quarter try 20 lineups in the quarter yeah. like for a month straight and yeah it's not it's tough. It's like just just eat, just get one less coffee, like every week, and do that, and you'll be fine. You'll have the money. Yeah. It's it's real difficult, because <laughs> I'm is. trying it. It's not working more often than not. I, a lot like, of that's what work. I used to do. And... Pat Corbin, three out of a hundred. I'm surprised it's three, but there's so much there randomness that that's yeah. fine. A lot of geo, all fourteen percent. I mean, that's yeah. a decent amount. Kluber, Wood, Otani, <clears throat> McCullers. Three for Cahill. Like, I would bump him up to do certain things, but it could just be a scenario where you don't need all of that savings. Right. Let's see who the stacks are. So, Indians. Which I hmm. didn't expect. Well, you liked them right off the top. Yeah. But, <clears throat> like, average, a little above average team total. Um, the weather's not great here in Minnesota, Minneapolis. Yeah, I, I didn't expect it to be, like, the first primary stack that comes up here. A lot of Lindor, a lot of Ramirez, a lot of Kipnis. Um, and then we'd be looking at Brewer. So there's Kane, Villar, Santana, Thames. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. Less Oakland than I expected. Yeah. I mean, I don't think ownership's going to be a huge issue on either site for the bats. Right. <clears throat> like I we, agree. We each like five or six stacks pretty um, or we're in on five or six stacks each. So, I don't know. I mean, I don't think ownership's going to be a huge issue. You got the Phillies, uh, Brewers, you like the Indians. Um, There's a lot to like out there. Yeah. So, it's ownership's a good day. Not, it's a good day yeah. for baseball. Really good slate. Is there anything else you wanted to touch on? Yes, hockey. Yes. Um, so I'll have the, the normal two articles out today, um, early this afternoon. Slate locks at 7.30 Eastern. And three more games. So these short slates have been profitable. They're all really short slates in uh, the playoffs. But it's a lot of fun to watch and might as well make some money while you're watching. So keep an eye out for those articles. Yeah, uh, we'll have hitters and pitchers and stacks out relatively soon probably near the time when most people are actually listening to this they'll already yes. be out um basketball slam dunks will be out uh, we've got three nba games tonight so that's a little bit more functional than it was yesterday with the just two games and basically no available functional centers on fanduel so yeah. three games will be good um you know baseball content throughout the day and we're just going to keep churning this stuff out we're getting, it, it's getting uh, better and better on a day-by-day -day basis. Yeah, getting into a little bit of a system here, and there's not a shortage of content. So No, there's not. Uh, baseball <laughs> doesn't go anywhere. Um, no. So if you don't like us, 
I feel bad for you guys because we're going to be around for uh, a lot of months in a row. Yeah. A lot of days in a row. <laughs> so, yes, we will. Yeah. You're going to want to mute me on Twitter. Alrighty, that's everything that I've got. Uh, check out everything at awesomeo.com, whether that's NBA, baseball, basketball. I said basketball twice, so hockey, <laughs> um, golf, whatever. It's all going to be there. Um, like and subscribe to the video. The channel is growing leaps and bounds. We couldn't be happier there. So thank you guys for, for liking the videos and subscribing and pulling that content to the top for us. And uh, check out Jake's stuff for hockey tonight. Uh, that's all I got. Good luck, everybody.